Hello there, my name's Ruth. For those of you who don't know me, um, this is my channel Inky Makes. I am an artist and ceramist based in the northeast of England. Um, how are you all doing? It's been a while. Um, I've been kind of mainly concentrating on shorts lately, um, but I thought I would check in just to see what is cracking and a little update on what I'm actually up to myself. Um, so recently I went to an amazing gig in Manchester for the band Sparks and for those of you who aren't familiar with Sparks they've been around since the 70s um, creating music. I think they've got 26 albums out now. It's, you know that's pretty good going I think for any band to be going that long but their music's changed a lot as you know bands tend to do um but anyway going back to like what i've been up to because i went to this gig i have been inspired to do some artwork based on one of their album covers and of course i had to put my spin on it and make them cats because you know why not um so i've been filming that and you're probably going to see little bits of that throughout this video um i'm also going to do a few little bits and pieces with um, like baking that type of thing just to keep it light um, so yeah like let me know what you guys think what have you been up to like I want to know what people have been doing and feel free to leave comments you know I will answer them um, so yeah yeah like also I think what I would like to do is put some of my favorite things in there because I was thinking about this the other week like the kind of stuff that I like to find out about artists is like what their inspiration was what are you guys up to how you doing that's just Dylan in rescue causing mayhem as per usual yeah that's still so yeah i'm going to show you some of my favorite books at the minute my art books that i've been looking at right okay so i'm going to show you some of my favorite illustrated books and these are in no particular order like i love them all just let me just that there i love them all um for different reasons um but i've got like a before I moved, I had like so many books, like crazy amounts of books, like it was ridiculous. Um, so I had to kind of cull a lot and really keep just the things that I really love. Unfortunately, I've got a book addiction and I still keep buying books, but now I've become a lot more discerning with what I'm actually going to buy. So. For me to keep these, it's like they are really special to me. So that again, not in particular order. Um, I've got the full set of these Ladybird books. Um, if you can, and they are illustrated by Natasha Durley. And I just really love. It's got that sort of collage cutout appearance to it. I'm not sure if she's done it digitally. Um, it does look extremely neat, so I would imagine it was probably digital. But I just love, like, I love that spread there. Like, I love all the different textures. And little, little twiggy trees. I love that. Um, and of course, I've picked out autumn here because autumn is probably my most favourite month. Month? Season. Um, but yeah, like, it's just... I'd like to do a set of like paintings as well that have kind of got this kind of spread where it's just like each individual like item. It's very sort of botanical science diagram type style. But yeah, so that's my first one that I really love that's in my collection. And like I say, I've got all four of them. This I bought from a charity shop and I was absolutely buzzing when I opened it because I was like the artwork is 
beautiful. Um, are we getting a visitor? Don't you dare jump on this desk while there's paint on it. Got too many things on here. The rescue's not going to jump up. God, rescue is a menace. Honestly, you can't do anything in this house without a cat appearing. Which is, you know, that's not really something to complain about, is it? So yeah, this book, The Mouse Hole Cat, Castle's got a cat in it. This is illustrated by Nicola Bailey. And there's one particular spread in it that I've just, I mean, all the pictures are lovely. Like, it's sort of the texture of the, like, I don't know how they've done it. It looks like a pencil drawing to me. Um, and, like, the character's just a little bit more thick set, and I like that about <laughs> pictures of people. I love this as well. It's, like, from the cat's perspective, like, following them around. Like, I would really love, like, I've told Richard this, I would really love to create a zine. Um, and I've got ideas, like you know, sort of brewing away my brain um, of what to, for it to be about. But obviously there's going to be cats in there. But like, I really just love, like, how it's following them about. And there's paint in the picture here. Where is it? It's so good. Like, I, I mean, honestly, I would, as you can see, I've got quite a few tattoos. I would get something. In, this is it. I just think that's absolutely beautiful. I think I'm actually going to do a painting or something inspired by that because I just love how like the waves are like sort of the cat is part of the sea. It's beautiful. Anyway, so that's the mouse hole cat, um, illustrated by Nicola Bailey. This is a classic. This is like going back to my childhood, and that's Spooks by Colin and Jackie Hawkins and this is Sally Hawkins the actress this is her parents I don't know if it's shining on there but any let me know did anybody else read this when they were a kid because I was fascinated with like I think I've possibly mentioned this on the channel before but like I love she has appeared once again she's like oh dad oh dad hello Hello, people. So, yeah. When I was a kid, I absolutely loved, like, spooky, cute stuff. Like, I used to watch Count Ducula. And, um... Rescue, you're totally interrupting my floor here. She's like, I don't care. Why are you more interested in something else other than me? Don't you dare destroy my sparks painting you little bugger oh hello baby i hope you don't get a you know a close-up shot of a butt nobody needs that rescue nobody needs it let mommy work she's like no honestly cats she is obviously wondering why i'm like talking to something that's not her Am I allowed to talk to people about this now? No. Come on, man. Come on. Good, good girl. Good girl. You're not getting anything for it, but good girl. <clears throat> right, anyway, spooks. Absolutely loved this book when I was a kid. I can remember getting it out at the library in my primary school. And um, I was just like, as a kid, like... Richard, Richard's the spooky one. He likes creepy horror, fi like horror films and horror games. Like he absolutely loves. Like I am not like that at all. I hate anything like that. I get really like I'm really bad for jump scares as well. Like the tension, I just cannot take it. But as a kid, I was like obsessed with like ghosts and stuff. I don't know if it was because I grew up in a really old house. And, like, everybody was, like, I remember people at school being, like, 
being like, oh my god, your house is haunted, like, it's so scary. And I was just like, no, it's not. Like, it's totally fine. Like, I would walk around it in the dark, like, no problem whatsoever. I mean, this is a house that's, like, over 200 years old. Um, and it just used to freak all my friends out. They'd be like, oh my god, put the light on, what are you doing? Like, and I just thought it was funny. And, in fact, if, if I can find another book that's there. Because this book, like really summed up my childhood this is the one i had to buy this this is the book i used to run in like run to in the bookshop like every weekend and um i never would dare ask my mum to buy me it because like i knew she'd be like oh no it's gonna it's gonna scare you you know what i mean you'll get freaked out by it and i and i would yes i would probably get freaked out by it because i was like tame and it didn't take much of a really active imagination but I absolutely loved this book as a kid. I still love it now. And um, I think it really, I don't know, formed my way of thinking from a young age. Um, I don't think they're like, well, I don't know. I don't think the illustrations in it particularly like stood out to me. But I mean, that's pretty cool though. The Phantom Hound. What, what's wrong with this little guy? It's just a ferret. I don't know what's spooky about that, but oh, cat snakes. That's what's spooky. Cat snakes. Also known as a ferret, if you're wondering what the hell I'm on about. But yeah, this book. I mean, I just love it's like very smudgy and stuff. Like the pen, like I don't know if it's like you know, like dip brush ink and like fine liner pen, but it's got like a smudgy effect to it and or is it watercolor i mean you can definitely tell there like i just love all that sort of texture but yeah i loved i love spooks they also did one called grannies and i've got that as well um it's really good i mean this this is an old library book this i bought it off i don't know which library it's from staffordshire but i bought it off ebay because that's so old, I don't think they have it in, in print anymore. The next one. Now, I found this book of poems by T.S. Eliot in Waterstones. And I got it reduced because of that little smudge there. But it should have been £15. And I think I got it for a tenner or something. But I absolutely, as soon as I saw these cats on the front here, I was like, I have to have this book. Who is this artist? Because obviously I love cats, but I just, the way they've been drawn really reminds me of the tattoos that I have on my feet. And um, they're probably, I don't want to say my most favourite tattoos because I love all my tattoos, but they're based on my cats. So obviously the, you know, special to me. And they were done by an artist called Hellfire. Yeah, she goes by Hellfire with one L on Instagram. She doesn't really do cat stuff anymore. Like, I think she got asked for it so much. And I know from myself, like, I used to be a tattooist. Um, and you kind of get known for a particular thing. And you keep getting asked for it, and that's great. But then, as an artist, the repetition kind of it's not that you at least in my like you know position it wasn't like I hated doing watercolor or anything I loved it but then I kind of got a bit like I felt constrained by it so you you know you're wanting to do different things all the time um but yeah this this is like I really love the, the illustrations in in this book let's see if I can I mean it's just the detail it's like the level of detail that's in stuff um and this is by Julia Sada, by the way, the illustrations. Julia, I'm really sorry if I've pronounced your name wrong, but Julia Sada, I think, is how you say it. Um, it's just the level of detail, like, just the little labels and that. Like, I don't know what it is. It's, like, it's hard to, like, describe, but it just does something to my brain. It makes me feel happy seeing, like, little, little details, and I think that's what I like to do in my own work like a few people have said to me they like looking around my paintings because there's little details kind of placed in there um 
again like I love that as well just like with, with all the bottles and the, and the fish and the calendar it's just so good and because I like I found this book I started looking at her work online and I started following her Instagram and I, I found this book by her um, The Wolf's Secret and it's just beautiful it's absolutely gorgeous like I love that like I love that I love the composition as well like I would like to do maybe some like pieces of work myself like I kind of started touching upon it on a recent um illustration that I did um based on Gab Smolders like she's a YouTube um creator like she she does gaming videos I don't know where I've put it is it in here yeah so like I did this recently and it, that that's actually inspired by like Japanese wood pr um wood block prints. Can't get my words out today. Uh, wood block prints and like I like the negative sort of all it is. The background is just different shades, obviously of greyish, brownish, black. But it gives a like an idea of a room. But there's an, it's just a fl it's fairly flat really. Um, I mean, some people would be like, yes, Ruth, it's very flat. It's very two D. But like. It's where you've like where I've placed these bits. It kind of creates the space, if you know what I mean. I don't know. It's like woodblock prints do that as well. That's what this reminds me of. This kind of, I mean, she mixes it up. You know, like I mean, that's a lovely sort of spread as well. Like with these panels down the side, it's got like a graphic novel, comic book type of feeling in places. But again, like you see how that it's just sort of. The fireplace is just sort of floating, you know what I mean? If there's nothing else in the background and I really like that. So yeah, like I love, 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 love these illustrations. They're so beautiful. Like the tapestries in the background, like I just, yeah. It's it's like looking at this is making my, it's massaging my brain. Like, I don't know, it's something about it I really love. And I mean, even the front cover, you know what I mean? Like the amount of detail in these flowers, it's just does it for me yeah um this book illustrated by david roberts really love this like obviously it's very interesting because it's about the suffragettes gives the whole history of it um but i absolutely love his illustrations as well um he's done a lot of illustrations for julia donaldson is that the one who did the gruffalo um and he's got like a whole series of illustrated books that he's done um oh, what is it called i can't remember the series off the top of my head um i think i'm gonna have to be quick here because i don't think i've got much space left on my phone here but yeah so just beautiful work it's a great story it's basically like the little porridge pot but with spaghetti um which is not dissing like you know the quality of the writing or anything because it's a classic tale you know i think there's a lot of like themes that just run throughout time basically with children's stories um and this is one of them rescue is losing a mind tonight this morning this afternoon what time is it i don't even know what day is it where am i this is like this book changed my life this is the one that really has set me on a course um from a young age now because i remember renting this from my primary school library as well and it's just amazing little dracula's christmas joseph wright um again like the illustrations so detailed like there's just you're like looking around and there's just lots of different things going on you know again it's that monstrous theme that i seem to strangely enjoy like another cat in there let's get a little fish for christmas um yeah so i just absolutely love it did anyone actually read these books as a kid please let me know because I mean, this this isn't actually my like my own copy as a kid. I didn't have my own copy. Like this is 
bought off eBay basically. Um, and I've got his first date school one as well because I just absolutely love the work. So yeah, there are some of my favourite books. I'm not going to say children's books necessarily because like the Suffragette one, I don't think that's really necessarily for kids. But illustrated books like I absolutely love. So yeah, let me know what you think. What are your favourite illustrated books? What were your favourite books growing up as a child? If you're an artist, um, or not an artist, like what books like made you see the world differently? Let me know in the comments. And I'll catch you later on in the video. Bye!
Hello again, this is just me signing out. Thank you for watching the video. Um, if you've made it this far um, and you've watched all the way through, well done. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was just me finishing off the little video with baking a cake. It's just a packet cake, but I think they're well underrated. They're really good. I'm not sponsored or anything by Betty Crocker, but if you're interested, let me know. <laughs> um, kind of disappointed with you know, my lack of upper body strength there, whisking the cake mix. I would have thought all that, you know, wedging clay and on the wheel would have given me more upper body strength by now, but never mind. Um, if anyone's got any sort of advice or tips or sort of suggestions of what you would like in f to see in future videos or, you know, suggestions on album covers, because obviously I've just painted... Um, my own version of a Sparks album, as you've seen in the video. Um, so yeah, if anyone's got any suggestions, let me know in the comments. I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing like film posters and stuff as well. So let me know what your favourites are. Um, and oh yeah, what kind of books and stuff have you read recently um, that you're inspired by? I would love to know. Um, or if there was anything from childhood that particularly inspired you, uh, that would also be, you know, something I'd be interested in. So just pop it down in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.